This is Ken Drews from the National Weather Service in Tucson. Let's take a look at monsoon 2016 and how it might unfold. This video will take a look at some of the key factors that go into making a precipitation forecast for the monsoon, which extends from June 15th through September 30th. While there are many factors to consider when making such a forecast, we'll consider three of the most common, ocean temperatures, current mountain snowpack, and climate models. Warmer than normal temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, or El Nino, is on the way out as sea surface temperatures have cooled to near average. A La Nina, or cooler than normal ocean temperatures, can mean a wetter than normal monsoon for southeast Arizona, but the relationship is weak even if those conditions develop. Where the snowpack is still lingering in the Rockies can help influence larger scale patterns that could bring moisture into our area, the longer term climate computer simulations are leaning toward a slightly wetter monsoon. We'll take a look at each of these factors in more detail. First, let's take a look at four weather patterns that have been identified during the monsoon. We won't get into great detail here, but some of these patterns will be referenced later in this presentation. Usually, we see more than one of these types in a season, but one type can dominate throughout the monsoon. So how much rain is normal? Obviously, that depends on your location. Southern and eastern areas tend to get more rainfall than northern and western areas, and mountains tend to receive more rain than valleys. And in general, rainfall usually ramps up as the summer progresses, peaking in July and August, then waning again in September. But this all varies from year to year. In this series of maps, heavier average rain amounts are indicated in orange and red, with those areas normally receiving 3 to 6 inches of rain during the month indicated. In this series of maps, the amount of rain that fell last year is compared to average. Greens and blues indicate areas which received more rain than average for that particular month in 2015, while yellows and oranges show where it was drier than normal. We were generally in a type 4 or transitional monsoon pattern for much of the summer as moist southeast flow was periodically replaced by dry southwest flow. From these maps, you can see June was generally wetter than normal, July and August were sort of hit and miss, and September ended up fairly wet. The end result was above normal rainfall. Northeast of Tucson, southwestward across parts of the Tucson metro to near Nogales. The relationship between equatorial Pacific Ocean temperatures and our monsoon is not as strong as it is when we are talking about winter precipitation, but as we know from this past winter, even that correlation does not always hold true. As we start monsoon 2016, we are transitioning from near normal sea surface temperatures toward cooler readings or La Nina conditions. This tends to favor a wetter monsoon, but again, the relationship is not a strong one. What commonly occurs during a La Nina is less tropical cyclone activity in the Pacific Ocean, which means a smaller chance of that moisture reaching southeast Arizona. However, Tropical cyclone activity in the Gulf of Mexico during the early summer can lead to increased rainfall for southeast Arizona if the flow pattern is favorable. Another factor that can influence the monsoon is mountain snowpack and drought. In order for monsoonal moisture to advance and persist as far north as Arizona, high pressure to our south needs to shift northward. While the high doesn't sit in the exact same location all summer long, it can favor one region over another for a number of weeks. The area of high pressure is really a dome of very warm air during the summer and as such tends to favor areas that have been persistently dry through the winter and spring. The driest area shown on the drought map on the left is Southern California, while the map on the right shows that the Northern Rockies have less snowpack remaining than the Central and Eastern Rockies. If the area of high pressure favors the Northern Great Basin area, as in the simulation shown, a favorable flow of moisture into Arizona from the southeast could result, leading to more days with significant rainfall. This is similar to the type 2 monsoon pattern shown earlier. A consensus of longer term computer models are indicating that portions of Arizona and Sonora could end up wetter than normal during July, August, and September, as shown in green in this graphic. A similar outlook for August, September, and October, not shown here, indicates near normal rainfall in Arizona, which may point to the bulk of our monsoonal rainfall occurring during July into mid-August. The official outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for July through September shows warmer than normal temperatures across much of the nation. Equal chances of wet, dry, or near average rainfall is also indicated. That could mean at least 
Some of us in southeast Arizona will receive decent rainfall this monsoon. However, let's review the three indicators that were just discussed and see if a somewhat less murky picture emerges. To summarize, the possible development of La Nina could lead us toward a wetter monsoon. Additionally, tropical cyclone activity early this summer in the Gulf of Mexico would make moisture readily available for transport toward Arizona by an easterly flow pattern that would result if high pressure takes root over the Great Basin. Finally, climate models are favoring a better chance for a wetter first half of the monsoon compared with the second half. Obviously, there are a lot of moving parts here, and although none of the factors we discussed lend a tremendous amount of confidence to the monsoon outlook in themselves, if they all come together, one might conclude an active monsoon early in the season, followed by less activity later in the season. Whatever the case, rainfall will likely be highly variable from location to location, and in the desert, every drop counts. While it's important to use our water wisely, also remember to be prepared for flash flooding and other dangers associated with thunderstorms during the monsoon. Thanks for listening to this presentation. For additional information about the monsoon, climate prediction, and monsoon safety, see the websites listed here. All of these are linked from the National Weather Service Tucson website, weather.gov slash Tucson. Monsoon Safety Awareness Week is June 12th through 17th this year, so stay tuned for more information and stay safe.